Heather thinks about software. <laughs> Heather thinks about copyright. Recently, the Supreme Court issued an opinion in Warhol v. Goldsmith, a case about fair use in appropriationist art, which may have implications for the current controversy over generative AI and copyright. I have been following this case as a matter of personal interest. The first law review article I ever published in the mid-1990s was about fair use and postmodern art, and I updated the article in 2022. I'll link to that update in the description. That's a traditional law review article, so it's long, detailed, and probably more than most people would ever want to know about the topic. But it shows that this issue has been percolating for decades. The intervening rise of the World Wide Web only made it more important. Andy Warhol was one of the most famous artists from the 1960s. In fact, you could say that his art personifies that era. And for those of you who don't know Warhol's art, he coined the phrase 15 minutes of fame. Warhol was the poster child, sorry for the pun, of a movement referred to as pop art, which parodied images from pop culture like advertising logos and mass-produced consumer goods. Appropriationism refers more generally to the reuse of images in art. The images being appropriated are often commercial or low art in nature, but they are almost always protected by copyright, and so fair use is usually involved. Warhol's most famous work was probably his Campbell soup cans or Marilyn Monroe images. He was skilled in printmaking, particularly silkscreen. He died relatively young in 1987 and left all of his assets to a foundation intended to advance visual arts. Since then, his estate has become one of the most ardent advocates of fair use in the law. Here are the facts of the case. Warhol's estate licensed an image called Orange Prince, an orange silkscreen portrait of the musician Prince, to Condé Nast for the cover of a commemorative magazine issue. The photo that forms the basis for Orange Prince was taken in 1981 by Lynn Goldsmith. Warhol's changes to the Prince image were similar to those he did to images of Marilyn Monroe in the early 1960s. After a long litigation process, the Supreme Court ruled that Warhol's appropriation was not fair use. If you want to read the entire opinion, I'll put the link in the description. Now, fair use is a complicated doctrine. Larry Lessig once quipped that fair use is the right to hire a lawyer. Fair use litigation is notoriously long and expensive. Good for the lawyers, not so good for everyone else. It's a fact-intensive inquiry, and that means it's rarely decided early in litigation where time means money. The copyright statute says fair use has four non-exclusive factors. The Supreme Court in this case focused on the first factor, which is the purpose and character of the use. The court decided that because Goldsmith was a commercial photographer and Condé Nast's use of the Warhol image was also commercial, the use was not fair use. That might be different from appropriating, say, a Campbell's soup can, which is made for advertising in a work commenting on the commercialism of our society. Here, the court noted that any parody in Warhol's work was directed at the effects on prints of the nature of fame and not a commentary on Goldsmith's photo. Prince himself had no say in the matter, of course, because the claim was based on the copyright for the photo and not on the publicity rights of Prince. At the end of the day, the court implied that Condé Nast or the Warhol Foundation should have properly licensed the image from Goldsmith and compensated her. Reading between the lines, Warhol is one of the most famous, successful, and posthumously wealthy artists of the 20th century, and Goldsmith was a commercial music photographer making a modest living. Warhol or Condé Nast could have afforded a license fee. The most important legal aspect of this decision is that it held that Warhol's work was not sufficiently transformative to be fair use. Over the years, transformativeness has become more and more important in fair use analysis. 
It's even been called a fifth factor, although some say it is actually the first factor dressed up in new clothes. Transformation has been the basis for lots of fair use cases in the last few decades, and the law has been moving towards protection of fair use rather than protection of the underlying artwork. Even for those who don't want to slog through the legal doctrine, there are a couple of interesting takeaways. One is the court didn't split along traditional ideological lines. Both Sotomayor and Thomas signed the majority opinion, and Kagan and Roberts signed the dissent. These are justices who don't agree on a lot of issues. But that's actually not so surprising. While the Supreme Court's biggest decisions are often reported as ideological rather than logical, intellectual property cases tend not to split across party lines. The other takeaway is the potential of this case to affect litigation about generative AI for visual images. The facts will be quite different. Interposing a machine learning model between the input and the output is not at all the same as Warhol physically copying Goldsmith's image. But those who are thinking about fair use, and particularly transformation, as a basis for training ML models will need to take this new opinion into account as they prepare their defense. Liking and subscribing makes me think more. Heather thinks about copyright.